Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good morning, Ashutosh. I am doing excellent. How about you? Yeah, I'm fantastic as well. Thanks for asking me too. So, how's your morning going so far? Uh, it's a relaxed morning. It's Sunday, so I generally don't keep any sessions on on a, on a Saturday. Why am I thinking it's Sunday? Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it's a relaxed morning, and uh, I have plans to go out in the evening. So, yeah, looking forward to it. How about you? What plans for weekend? Yeah, for me especially, nothing special today. It's a relaxed day for me as well, as it is Saturday and Sunday. So I would go for Jagannath Yatra. There is a Yatra tomorrow in my city. So I would be visiting that. But today I want to have one or two sessions and I want to consume a lot of content and I would be posting as well. That's what I'm thinking. Apart from this, it's normal. So what about you? Do you take two days off? Like how many days do you work? Five days or six Five days? days. How's that Monday work for you? Friday. Oh, that's great. Same here, actually. So that's why Saturday and only usually on Sundays I go out, uh, maybe visit temples or for all those things. Or if something important is there, then I go for that. Okay. okay. So yeah, we are here to discuss some important questions which are really, really important what I feel for the people who are learning this language. They want okay. to know that how to fix all these problems. Mm -hmm. So the first yeah. question I want to know from it that when a person is start speaking, they are able to express themselves, but sometimes they do not get the right sentence or right structures or maybe the right words in their mind, then they take pillars, even though I do so many times. So that yeah. I want to know how we can fix this problem and how we can overcome from it. Wonderful. That's a great question, Ashutosh. And I think it's very common for a lot of people, even for uh, public speakers. They also take time to think about words and use filler words in between. So before we get started with how to solve it, let us first make it clear to our audience what filler words are, right? So mm -hmm. most of the time we see people want to talk about a topic and then they are like, mm, uh, oh, uh, like, right? So these are the kind of things that you use in between your sentences to fill the gap for the time that you are thinking, right? So that's why these words are called as filler words or these sounds are called as fillers, okay? So whenever you are starting off with the language, it is very common for people to use fillers, but we need to understand that anything that is done in excess is not right, or it can sound very redu redundant to your audience, right? So first of all, accept the fact that you use fillers, accept the fact that everybody uses fillers, but what extent to which you are using it is something that you can control, okay? So first things first, whenever you realize that, you know, you are using filler words, whenever you are doing your speaking practice, start recording yourself, not just in front of the mirror, because in front of the mirror, you, you cannot play it back or replay and see what you have been doing, right? So record yourself when you are speaking and look at yourself as to how many times have you paused and how many times have you used fillers? What that does is it impacts you psychologically. Subconsciously, you will see because we are the biggest critics of ourselves. No matter how much anybody else corrects us, whenever we see that, okay, this is where I made a mistake, that registered, you know, that gets registered in your brain. And next time, it will automatically somehow tell you that, you know, you use a lot of fillers. Stop doing that. So if you do this as a practice, it can really help. So recording yourself is number one to identify how many times you are using fillers. The next thing that you need to do or you can practice is structuring your thoughts. Most of the time people use fillers because they do not have a structured thought process. You go, you speak about something and you are thinking about something else completely. And that is when your thoughts muddle up and you start using filler words in between. So structuring your thoughts before you speak about anything, like right now, I haven't prepared anything. I am speaking to you. But in my mind, I know that 
you know first i will explain fillers then after that i want to talk about what are the different ways so that is called structuring your thought so structure your thoughts that helps you in reducing the amount of fillers that you are using number 3 is again very important and has to has got to do with your subconscious mind and your mindset that is stop translating from your mother tongue to english when you are speaking because in that translation process you start thinking you start pausing and you start using filler words so yeah train your brain to start thinking in english when you are not talking as well when you are speaking to yourself speak to yourself in english in your mind right that ways you will significantly be able to reduce the number of filler words that you are using the other way is making uncomplicated and short simple sentences most of the time people get into the habit of using fillers because they are making too long and complicated sentences you want to weave all your thoughts together and talk about them in one go so if you can try and cut down your thoughts into smaller segments and then talk about them in smaller sentences it will help you in significantly again reducing your filler usage okay so these are the few three to four ways in which you can slowly and steadily start working on reducing your fillers yeah, exactly you are you are right so it is very important to identify how many fillers do you take and i i feel it's natural if you take few mm-hmm. but if you're taking a lot then it is going to be a problem for your speaking so but Absolutely. sometimes i feel people are not able to understand that they take fillers and they mm-hmm. they have to like you know they need a person who can point out to them that you took right now then this Correct. is the second and third then they understand yes i'm taking fillers Correct. so you are absolutely right it is very important to have knowledge about that topic and that subject then only you can speak about it otherwise it's very common that you would not get thoughts about it and what Correct. happens with some people they try to become advanced when they are not so they try to like use a lot of complicated and difficult sentence structures maybe some words which they want to show off to others so that is a big problem if you are comfortable yes. using them then do it otherwise try to make it simple right absolutely yeah okay so moving on to the another question that is related to vocabulary as we said we talked in the previous question also that sometimes when people talk about something they want to use a lot of words and that is good as well i would say it's good because if you want to become a advanced level speaker you should know the vocabulary in a good manner and you should know the like you know the right way to use them in conversation as well so what do you think how we can work on it because what i feel most of the people know vocabulary but they do not know how to use them in conversation and they always struggle with it so Got what's it. your take on this Okay so yes vocabulary is very important now vocabulary is nothing but your word bank right how many words do you know the more words you know the more easy it becomes for you to converse and express yourself right now first of all one thing that you should remember is when you are building on your vocabulary try and use words that are relevant when i say relevant it means do not go back to the shakespearean era or to british english and i want to use the most complicated the most ornamental word that i have ever heard because then it is not relevant to your audience in today's time you do not expect anybody to open a dictionary every time you speak or every time you send out an email nobody is going to be interested in that kind of a conversation so number one keep in mind that your vocabulary needs to be simple yet advanced right so you know i keep making a lot of videos on this a good way to work on your vocabulary is try and cut down on the use of very so we say a lot of times you know uh, very this very that very happy very sad um, it's very cold it's very hot so try and come up with words which are simple and which are a replacement of the very that number one is an advanced level of building up your vocabulary right even right. if you are going for language exams like uh, you know uh, duolingo or ielts you will see that these 
words if you use. For example, um, you know, it's very big, it's gigantic mm -hmm. or enormous, right? So using a better word than using very big because very big is very basic. Yes, right? it is. So rather than using a standard word, if you use an advanced word, that means you have a good grip on your vocabulary. So that is number one to understand that it is nothing to do with complicated words. It is just using relevant words and working on, you know, trying to know synonyms. Synonyms are similar meaning words. So if you know one word, try and know the variations of that word as well. So working on synonyms, working on antonyms, they are very antonyms again, opposite meaning words, right? So these are good ways to build on your vocabulary. But the thing that you pointed out is great that there are some people who knows a lot of words, but <laughs> while using them, they, they are not able to use. That is because they are just, you know, treating it as textbook grammar where they are mugging up the words, but spoken English is not mugging up grammar. Spoken English is more about practice. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how many words you know. If you are not putting them in practice, they are not going to help you. It is as simple as that. So whenever you come across a new word that you like, that, okay, this is an interesting word, I can use it in my daily conversation. Or you hear somebody say something, someone is using a, a certain sentence or a phrase and you really like it, right? First off is make a note of it. Maybe in your mobile, if you're not too great in remembering things, you can use your mobile always, right? So make a note of it. Then your next step should be try and make as many scenarios, as many sentences as possible in your mind with that phrase or with that sentence. Even if you are not wanting to sit down with a pen and a paper and write them down, it's okay. You may be just cooking or you may be just, you know, doing some other chore. But try and see, okay, I heard this word enormous today and it means very big. So how many different ways can I use it? Right. right? So try and push yourself to do that. Because learning any language or being fluent in any language is definitely a lot of effort that you put in from your side, right? So try and use them in sentences, try and use them in scenarios. And then the next step is try and use them in your conversations with others. You can start small with your inner circle. If you are very conscious, I know people are very conscious at times that what will the other person think of me? But we all have exactly. that maybe one friend, one, uh, you know, family member who is willing to help us in our journey. Or you may have a mentor. So try and leverage that, you know, uh, circle that you have and try and use that word with them. Once you do this, your brain automatically registers that word because by now you have used that word quite a few times. And then next time a certain scenario comes up, it will be easier for you to use it. Yes, exactly. It's all about like practicing uh, your English on home ground, then just yes. go out and play in the finals, even though mm -hmm. you play in other pitches. So that's right. great. Exactly. It's all about the practice. So and it's all about discussing the word as well, which you learn, make a friend with whom you can discuss every day that I learned two words today and make some sentences, sentences and a story out of it. So that is very practical. But most of the people are not able to do it and they ask the same question again and again. But whatever the tips you are going to give them, they are not going to work on it because uh, it takes a lot of efforts, to be honest. Perfect. So that's yeah. what the thing is. OK, so coming to the related question to this, that is like as we discussed that words are very important. Now, the pronunciation of the words. I have mm. seen a lot of people who use like a lot of difficult and advanced and good words, but when it comes to their pronunciation, that is not correct. So we cannot mm. understand, even though if they speak the same word for three times, but it's difficult for us to understand because their pronunciation okay. is not right. So it is okay. very important to have the right pronunciation and clear pronunciation of all those words and sentences so people can understand you better. 
So Absolutely. what do you think about the pronunciation and how we can improve the pronunciation of all those structures and words and phrases? Wonderful. That's a great question again, because uh, English is one language where pronunciation makes a lot of difference to what you are trying to express, right? Because rightly, as you said, that some people, they will say the word again and again, still you cannot get it. You cannot understand what they are saying. And that is not effective communication, right? So first off, it's very important again to acknowledge and identify the fact that you have a pronunciation problem. Many people do not even want to, you know, consider the fact that they have a pronunciation problem. It can be right. ignorance or it can be, um, you know, maybe they are just hesitant or scared to work on it. Or maybe they are, you know, they are just thinking that, okay, whatever it is I'm speaking, let people understand if they can, if not, just let it be. But that's not the right way to go about it. Because tomorrow, none of our lives are stuck at one point. Today, you may be at an associate level. But tomorrow, you are going to grow up the ladder. You would definitely want to grow up the ladder. You want to have promotion. You want to be able to lead people. And pronunciation is one thing which can completely ruin your communication, even if you are perfectly fine with your grammar or you have great thoughts. If your pronunciation is not good, people are always going to point a finger at you and they will say that, you know, this person doesn't know English or they will not be able to understand you. As simple as that. It can be two of them. Either they will make fun of you or they will just not understand you. So, yes. Paying attention to your pronunciation is extremely important from the very beginning of your English language learning journey, right? Now, having said that, the good thing is English is a language that is built on sounds, okay? So, understanding those sounds and being able to work on those sounds is extremely important. So, there are vowel sounds and there are consonant sounds. Right now, luckily, because of all the, you know, Internet and YouTube and extensive content that is available on the Internet, you can very easily Google or search on YouTube for vowel sounds and consonant sounds. And there are tutors who will uh, very patiently help you pronounce each sound in a simple and easy manner. OK, mm -hmm. in India, a very common problem is the sir and sher sound. A lot of people have this problem because of which their pronunciation is not clear. For example, the word determination. Right. Mm -hmm. If you say in a, in, in, in a public forum, if you say, you know, uh, this guy has a lot of determination, it automatically ruins the entire vibe of that sentence. Right? Yeah. So pronunciation yes. is very important. So try and work on those sounds, follow the videos which are available and work on your sounds, gain clarity on that. And there are, you know, some people who have a genuine problem since birth. When they initially start pronouncing words, they cannot differentiate between certain sounds, but that is completely workable. And you can use different speech therapy exercises, which are again available on the Internet. Just look for speech therapy on such and such sound, right? For the sure sound, you can search SH sound and you will be able to see different exercises that you can do to clarify your sound. Now, once your sounds are clear for pronunciation, number one is you have to have clear sounds. After that, whichever word you are unsure of, right? That, okay, maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. Or somebody points out that, hey, this is one word that you're not pronouncing correctly. Always be curious, you know, have that tendency to find out what is the correct pronunciation or what is the way in which I can pronounce it so that it is the standard pronunciation because otherwise people cannot understand, right? So you can use Google for that. You can use uh, YouTube for that. And whenever you hear that word, you know, try and repeat it after that. Once you exactly. repeat it, 
you know, once you get a hang of that word, then try and say it without hearing that sound, but record yourself this time so that you replay and you see how you are doing. Right? Exactly. So, right. <laughs> these are the few things you can do to work on your pronunciation. But again, you know, whatever uh, tips or details we share with you, the most important thing is to realize that it all needs effort. Just watching videos is not going to help. You need to put in that effort and only then you will be able to see some result. Yes, exactly. Most of the people want to learn English by listening or listening English content or by reading English content, but they do not want to do practice. So moreover, it is very important to do practice, to come out yes. from your comfort zone and start practicing and speaking to people. Make some good friends who can tell your mistakes so you can grow together. It is very important. Okay. Yeah. So at last, like we discussed very important issues, like, you know, the English learners have, like we started with first uh, the pillars, then we talked about uh, the vocabulary, and then we discussed this pronunciation issues. So all these mm -hmm. things are really important for the people who want to become better in English, I feel. And whatever you said, that is exactly right. I can't agree more with you. The tips and tricks were really awesome and marvelous, I would say. So thank you so much. Many, many thanks to you, ma'am, for joining me today. I'm so happy to have your conversation with you. Thank you so much for having me over. I always enjoy my conversations with you, Ashutosh, and we will definitely meet again. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, ma'am. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Take care.